What is up? What is up? Welcome back to another episode of Talkative. This is episode 21 of the show. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, usually an episode would have been out today, Saturday, but I had no plans to record uh, the week that just passed. So I decided just to take the week for myself and no episode is going to be out today. Uh, sincere apologies for that, but this episode will be going up early next week week to make up for not releasing an episode today i told you guys in previous episodes that there will be moments like this throughout the show where perhaps ideas won't be clicking in or maybe i'm just tired overall and i'm like okay i'll let you guys know on instagram or even on all the other social media platforms that we're on my tiktok on twitter wherever that i'll be taking the week off that there will be no episodes for the week and maximum the maximum time that i'm going to be taken off is a week nothing more nothing less than that so we're back this week for more of the show and usually i try to keep the show at a minimum when it comes to serious current events and transpired in the real world and society for some of them some of them you just you just want to discuss them not 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 for your own benefit like i'm not hopping on here to discuss current events because okay this this will make good content or i'm going to make money out of this no everything that i discuss that's based on it on today's society is out of the heart and because i know that i have a platform and that i need to utilize my platform to the best of my ability when it comes because as you guys know we live in a vile and corrupt and crazy world already so these are situations these are things that even if you want to keep your podcast clean and just out of it completely there are some cases where you just say no this this needs to be discussed like for example when the war in ukraine started i had the courage to hop on here and give my thoughts on everything that's going on not out of spite not because i tell myself i want to make money out of this no that's never the reason and if you're a content creator if you're a podcaster let me tell you this never use current day events never use problems that are happening in the real world today to make profit out of your for your own platform for your own benefit never do that because at that point you're not even doing it it's not coming out of your heart it's coming out of your mind because you say I'm only doing this for money. I want to follow the trend because that's what happens nowadays. People look at the current day event and they say, "Oh, everyone's talking about it. Um, l- let me follow along. Let me let me let me hop on the ride." When this is not a trend, you know, a lot of current events that happen, people want to make it this whole big deal, like like it's like if it's a TikTok trend or something that's famous or viral. No, this is real life stuff that happens in the world that we live in. So if you're a content creator and you use your platform not to advocate or not even advocate, but to spread the word, to give your thoughts, to give your prayers, to to say what we should do to seek change and do better as a society, then you're part of the problem because you're utilizing your platform for the wrong reasons. So just a quick PSA for everyone who's doing podcasts out of the heart. I'm just letting you guys know if you are doing a podcast and you talk about these particular things, do it for the good reasons, not the bad reasons, not the reasons that you're not supposed to do. That being said, uh, we're going to transition to what the topic is. And uh, if you guys haven't heard this past week, pretty sure everyone knows about it, especially if you live in the area. I live in Long Island. And I'm sure people who live in the city know what happened. On uh, this past Saturday, May 14th, there was a mass shooting in one of the most uh, major cities in New York State, Buffalo at a supermarket, local supermarket on a Saturday afternoon. Um, the, the shooter killed 12 innocent people who were just going about their day shopping. 10 of those people uh, were indeed black uh, African-Americans who were just innocently shopping and going about their day. This, ladies and gentlemen, was an intended hate crime. There's nothing more to it. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no defending it. There's no finding an excuse out of it. This was indeed a hate crime. And I just, uh, first and foremost, my, my prayers and my condolences go out to the families who um, had, who were families of the victims of the shootings. Our prayers are with you. 
uh, we know that it's a tough time for you guys right now and that no you know I wish this upon nobody whatsoever this is a situation that even me myself I, I probably won't I don't know how I would even cope with it or react to it losing a loved one just out of hatred just because someone had a vendetta towards somebody or a particular group of people will get there in a moment but it's just it, it's it's heartbreaking it really is and like i said our prayers go out to um the families affected and i say this very discreetly because i know that it's a very common thing for people to come on here and say those two things my condolences my prayers to you and your families but what makes people upset what makes people infuriated what makes people mad is that nothing is being done to stop to put an end to gun violence or violence in general particularly when it comes to do with other people of different race it's this is something that and again i know this is a very sensitive topic and just to, just to let you guys know when i talk about these things when it comes to current events i don't talk about political views i don't give stance in politics because look personally me me and politics do not go hand in hand i try to stay away from political discussion at all this is just a neutral discussion as to what's going on and i'm specifying this because i know there's a lot of people out there that are going to find something to bash me for or you know cancel me because i probably said something that was against of what's really going on here look i'm not trying to cause any controversy i'm just discussing the event so i'm, le I'm letting it be known now this is not something where i'm picking sides discussing the left side discussing discussing the right side no we're not talking about this this is just a neutral straight up discussion that's all it is with that being said um like i was saying people take those particular statements my condolences my prayers and they say okay thank you but this is this is going to fix the this isn't going to fix the root cause of this problem that we're having with gun violence and violence in today's society and that's understandable people want change people are seeking change they're tired of hearing the constant uh, uh condolences and prayer statements although they appreciate it no one can turn that down of course but people want change we need change that's the most important thing this has to stop this has to stop and you know uh, listen there's a lot that i that, that i will be discussing in regards to this and we, we are going to make correlation with technology as well because if you guys don't know the the shooter did stream this through a webcam on a helmet on twitch but we'll get to that in a second i just wanted to get through what actually transpired uh, last saturday at the at the supermarket so yes change is what we need and change is what we're seeking right now at this very day and age because in the world that we live in everything is just so vile everything is just so corrupt that we don't know to who or to where we need to put our trust in if you guys get what i'm saying we just don't know it it, it gets to the point where we just don't know if we should trust our particular politicians or government officials that are um leading the states that we live in or leading the country that we live in quite frankly we just don't know so we just we, we as one human race that we are have to keep fighting have to keep fighting have to keep seeking change fighting that change fighting for that change and yes like i said to those who give their prayers and give their condolences we appreciate it but at the same time prayers and condolences isn't going to fix the problem that we've been having for decades and centuries now put it that way let it be known change needs to occur when it comes to violence and violence with that being said like i said this this was a hate crime that the attacker was, was responsible of killing 12 people and if there's any more evidence as to why this was a hate crime the 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 attacker had the the racist slur the n-word written on his rifle as well so i mean like i said man hatred 
hatred is what drives it all i mean what else can it be uh, if you have such disdain or hate towards a group of people and uh, or just people in general what what excuse can you find out of it oh they say this is this is what is being said on social media right now uh he had covid so the victim who is my age by the way i'm 19 turning 20 but he was 18 pretty much our age group um they said that he had covid before that and that he was stressed out he couldn't find a way to socialize and let me tell you this when i when i read these statements by the way shout out to um activists and, and journalists uh sean king Sh shout out to the work that he does because he is doing the work of god right now by doing what he does and st standing up for everyone's rights doesn't matter what race you are he does the work of the people shout out to sean king this is where i got this information from um through his post on instagram it says and i quote he's been going through a lot of covid we don't know if this could be the reason why or maybe he's just nervous or hasn't had hasn't been having the best social life so let me tell you this this is coming from the families directly of the attacker you're telling me that the best way to socialize is to go out and diligently not, not even that not diligently purposely purposely kill innocents that are just going about their day that's socializing to you like that's this this is what i don't understand that that is socializing to you going out and killing innocents for hatred because you have like i said such disdain or just vile emotions toward, towards a group, group of people that's no excuse for that that is no excuse for that your son grandson brother whatever he is to you committed a crime okay a hate crime stop trying to justify it with bs excuses stop trying to justify it i i don't understand that when situations like this happen the the family members of the attacker immediately think of some sort of excuse to cover it up and sugarcoat it no no you're not looking through it through the right lens and look that's another point that I'm going to make here. It's all about how you're raising a child and the mentality of a child. We'll get there in a moment. Because there's another point that I want to bring up as well. Real quick here. Um, people, when it comes to shootings, mass shootings, I do notice the trend or I do notice the one thing that people tend to go after and um, start pointing fingers at. And that is video games or the gaming industry, right? People say, oh, the root cause of it all is all the video games that these kids and, and young people be playing nowadays. Listen, I'm going to make this clear. And you guys take it as you wish. Take it as you will. Like I said, this is just a neutral conversation. If you guys want to give your opinions on it, go in the comment section and discuss it. Feel free. Yes, there are a lot of violent games out there being developed. Can't can't deny that. Can't cover that up. There are a lot of first-person shooters. There are a lot of rated M for mature games that do promote violence and that are violent to an extreme. I understand that. I'm not defending that. I'm not saying that necessarily every game out, out there is healthy or every game out there is should be able to, to be consumed by everybody. Of course, there's a lot of violent games out there. But this is this shouldn't be the first thought in your mind when it comes to mass shootings. Why is this? Here's here's the reason why I'll tell you. It all comes down to how a particular child or young man or young woman even it, it goes both ways. Doesn't matter gender. It, it goes both ways. It all comes down to how you're treating and raising that child and what morals you are teaching that child before you even point fingers at the gaming industry make sure that you are monitoring and raising your child properly before you go ahead and point fingers at all these video games all all these kids they, they play call of duty they play battlefield and all that if you don't want your kid to be exposed or to be consuming particular content 
you as a parent or as a guard as a family member or guardian needs to be on top of your child simple as it is you need to be on top of your child no matter what if you don't want your kid to play a particular genre of games let your kid know by the way in the in the most kindest and respectful way possible do not scream at your kid if you catch your kid playing a game of call of duty or battlefield do not go into the defensive and start yelling at your kid and start punishing at your kid because all it's going to do is that that's going to tr trigger a rebellion for your kid your kid is going to end up playing it more and doing it more because they want they're going to rebel because of the way you're pursuing the message you're yelling at the kid and making him feel bad and or guilty for playing such game. No. When parents do this type of thing, when they instantly go into the defensive and start yelling and screaming and punishing, that doesn't do anything to help. Listen, and I understand, I'm probably not qualified for this discussion because I'm, I'm not even a parent yet, but I know, I know basic knowledge i have this basic information because i see this happen all the time as a parent the best way to go about certain things is through conversation and communication not by accusing not by pointing fingers not by yelling at your kid because when a kid is a teenager or even a young adult they will rebel if you yell at them they're gonna they're, they're going to yell back. If you tell them to do something in a vile manner, in a, in a harsh manner, they're going to keep doing it. No. Be mindful as a parent. If you don't want your kid to be exposed to a certain genre of video games, tell them, listen, son, daughter, I don't want you playing these particular games. So I'm going to ask you in a polite way. Do not get exposed or play these type of games because they provoke too much violence and i don't want you to get in a situation where um you get angry or you start to love these negative emotions because of these games so please i ask you as your mother as your father don't play these games okay that's how as a parent you need to go about with these situations but no what what, what do i see a lot of the times Yell, yelling, arguments, accusations, pointing fingers, judgments, being judgmental, um, punishing, grounding, hitting. Because you catch your kid playing a particular game that they're not allowed to. First of all, how did you let them get exposed to that? This, this is where I'm coming from. Moderation. Moderate what your kids are seeing and or consuming online. If you don't want your kids to play a particular genre of games, to watch a particular um set of tiktoks or to be on a particular set of tiktok monitor them in the best way possible in a modest way not in an aggressive way okay this is what a lot of parents and families need to understand that when it comes to mass shootings video games content online is not the root cause it's how you monitor and raise your child listen like i said Think what you want to think. Say what you want to say. Oh, oh, you expect me to listen to a 19-year-old? No, I'm not expecting you to, to take my advice because that's the thing. You're going to get into this mental process and this mentality where you think that I'm not qualified for this type of thing and that you shouldn't listen to me. But listen, I'm giving you the broad information because of things that I see online or how parents handle these situations. Be modest, be respectful, and just know how to raise your children. Because listen, I'll tell you this. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm a gamer myself. Gaming, if anything, is one of my huge, one of my biggest passions. Something that I've been that I've carried along with me since I was a kid. I've played pretty much. I played it all. First person shooters, third person shooters, racing games, fighting games. You name it. I've played it all. But. I understand that what I'm saying doesn't correlate to anybody, doesn't relate to everybody. Everybody's different. Listen, I was raised to not be aggressive, to not be influenced by a lot of things that I consume, whether it be videos, movies, social media posts, or even gaming. I never, if I'm playing a game and 
I see that I'm losing or that I'm getting too upset or too aggressive because I'm not performing well, I'm not doing well, I'm not playing well. I might get upset, I might mad, I might rage as we say, but at the same time, I'm not I'm not gonna get influenced by it to the point where my my everyday events, my emotions are depicted by that. I'm yelling around the house. I'm not gonna be yelling around the house, cursing everybody, insulting everybody, throwing things, throwing controllers, breaking stuff. Because that's where you know you reach that point. You reach that limit where you're like, okay, this has to stop. Because obviously, I don't have the mental tolerance or the mental stability to be playing these games because I get mad really easily or I'm short-tempered. I was raised that way, to not be short-tempered, to not be influenced. And again, I'm willing to re-elaborate. Everyone's, everyone's situation is different, and I, and I understand. And I understand. But it all comes down to how you're raising your child and the mental stability of that child. If that child has had a history, a long-term history of getting mad, of being short-tempered, of breaking things, being aggressive, getting into fights, obviously your child should not be playing any Call of Duty game, any call, any game to do with war or guns. That's a no-brainer. That is a no-brainer. Again, re-elaborate again. I'm not defending the fact that these games are not violent. Yes, I understand. A lot of games that are developed nowadays are are violent or mature. They contain a lot of graphic content, I understand that, but that is not the root cause. That probably adds more to the situation if the situation here is you're not raising your child properly or this, the mentality of that child is poor, okay? Playing the game is only going to make it even worse and that's where I can understand and be comprehensive and say, okay, this type of game is not meant for this child or this person. I understand that. I'm not sitting here and defending and saying, oh, uh, these shooters are okay. Yeah, yeah, everyone everyone is eligible to play shooters. Everyone should play shooters. They, they'll, they'll be all right. It's whatever. No, nah, don't worry. Don't know. Because I, I understand this is coming from, a, from somebody who's been playing video games their entire life. I get it. Games can be violent. Yes, I know that. And I know that for some families and some parents, this is things that don't go well with them. These are things that they, they don't want to relate to. These are things that they don't want their kids to be exposed to. And I understand and I respect your decision and the way you're going about things. But like I said, everything through modesty and regulation and moderation and the way you're raising your child. If your child only plays video games for the sole purpose of entertainment and to entertain themselves, and they, they'll get mad in the moment because here's the thing. When you game, when you watch a movie, when you watch a TV show, whatever whatever it is you're doing, it's only for the moment. It's only for the amount of time that you're playing that game that you'll express certain emotions. So you'll get excited, hyped, angry, annoyed. But then after that, once you turn off your console and go about your day or do something else, that's gone. That that that's in the past. You you you'll remember it. You'll go back to it. But it's not like you'll make that. A big deal for the rest of your entire life or the rest of your day because there's times where people go through something throughout the day and they're mad about it but they're mad about it for the entire day and that's the thing here it's only momentarily where we express these emotions but the problem lies here if you are upset over something that happens in a video game and you carry along with that emotion for the entire day that's the problem if you can't move on after you rage for a bit or you get annoyed, if you can't move on and say, okay, it happened, I'm gonna let it slide, it's whatever, it's in the past now, that's the problem, okay? Because that's when you begin to get influenced by the, by the type of content that you consume in today's day and age. So when it comes to that, when it comes to gaming, this is what I wanted to address and just give my take on again neutral take i'm not defending no sides i'm just keeping it real with you guys if you guys want to argue if you guys want to discuss feel free but keep it clean keep it professional keep it honest that's all that's all i understand i understand where parents are coming from families are coming from when they say a lot of these games are violent a lot of these games promote violence yes 
I get it. But at the same time, not everybody plays video games to then get influenced by them later on. If you know that your child has a poor mentality, if you know that your child is short tempered, gets angry easily, say to yourself, okay, this is the type of content that my child should not be consuming. And that's it. Let me make it clear to them in a respectful manner. That's all you have to do. And again, if you're a parent and you're listening to this right now, and you say to yourself, well, I'm not going to take advice from a 20 year old. Listen, I'm not expecting you to take any of this at all. I'm just putting it out there that we need to pay attention to the root cause. And that is the two things that I've discussed. Mental state and how you raise your children throughout lifetime. Because if your children is constantly around violence, arguments, yelling, insults, whatever the case may be, and their only escape, the one escape they're fi they find to take their anger out is probably these aggressive and violent games, then it's not the game's fault. The game only adds on to the root problem here, and that is the way that you've raised them or where their mentality is at currently. And that's all. That's all. So moral of the story when it comes to this is regulate what your child consumes. Raise your child in a, with a positive mindset, with positive thoughts. If you don't want your child to play a particular genre of video games, don't let them play Communicate with them. Don't yell at them. Don't scream at them. Don't punish them if you catch them playing a particular game because that's not going to do you any favors. Communicate. Sit down and talk with the child because that's the best way you can get points across when you know how to communicate a particular topic or point. When you know how to be expressive. Because I, I see this, this, this is a common thing nowadays where automatically People see that a shooting has occurred somewhere around the country or, or even the world and they automatically say, oh, yep, it's video games. No, no. First of all, evaluate yourself and say, am I raising my child properly? Am I teaching him the good, what's good and then what's bad? Am I teaching him that he should always go for the good and not for the bad? Does he have a healthy mentality? Has he been bullied? Has it, is, is his home life healthy? Okay. Is his home life healthy? Is his home environment healthy? Has he been get, getting yelled at? Um, am I treating him with dignity and respect? Am I talking, talking to him with, with respect? That's what you need to evaluate first before you go on to point fingers. Because let me tell you, yes, games are violent, but we live in a world that's you know, influenced by money, influenced by business. You just can't tell these game developers because they won't. Okay, as much as you would like to, you can't tell these game developers to stop developing these games because they know that this is what generates their money. We live in a world that's influenced by money at the end of the day. Okay? It all comes down to regulation and the teachings that you give nowadays as a parent. That's the main message here. And again, people are going to take this the way, the way they want to take it. And I'm mentally prepared for that. I'm not trying to scold you. I'm not trying to tell you how you should be raising your children. Because I'm not qualified for that. I'm just giving you my overall honesty and thoughts on a situation like this. And what I think should be done properly. I'm not telling you. Oh, um, um, whatever your name is, I'm not pointing fingers at you. If you're a parent and you're listening to this, I'm not pointing fingers at you and saying, see, this is how you should be raising your child. No. No, I'm just talking perspectives. I'm just talking honesty with you guys and the ways that these particular situations should be handled. That's all. I'm, I'm mature enough to understand that nobody needs to take my advice seriously, that people will will automatically defend themselves and say, no, how, how is a random podcast host going to tell me how I should be living my life or how, how I should be living my children? I understand that. That's not my goal here. My goal is to be honest with you guys and 
talk my takes. This is why this is a podcast at the end of the day. I'm not trying to be divisive. I'm not trying to start arguments or cause controversy. Like I said, I'm not a parent. I'm not trying to teach you how you should be raising your child. I'm just giving you the broad aspect of how I think these situations should be handled. And again, I'm not defending these game industries or these games when I when I do say yes, they are violent. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm not defending that. But again, just rewind on the episode and you'll hear my reasoning as to why or as to how these situations should be handled. Oh apologize, it, it, it got really intense though. Uh, this is why, you know, like I said, I tend to keep episodes like these uh, at a minimum because I know how uh, intensive and, and or controversial they can get. But listen, this is important. This is the world that we live in. Somebody got to do the talking, right? Somebody got to spread the word. Somebody got to uh, spread the awareness. So that's the that's the main motive here. But with that being said, um, we're going to stay on the topic of gaming because, uh, like I said, uh, the attacker definitely streamed the entire event on Twitch. Twitch, obviously, being uh, one of the biggest streaming platforms for streamers and gamers today, what had the content there for like two minutes until they took it down immediately. Now, for Twitch, this is where we're going to close off this episode. If I'm a million dollar company where I'm allowing many thousands of streams of a diversity amount of content, a diverse amount of content, I should say, I need to make sure I have a proper system of content regulation and make sure that none of the content that's being streamed is filed against the community guidelines, whatever the situation is, keep the bad content on a a platform simple they say oh it took twitch two to three minutes to eliminate the content um out but people were still able to you know record it screenshot it save it and then post it all over the internet listen taking it down is not doing anything you guys as a company needs to have a system automated system whatever the case may be proper ai that regulates content every second that it's being streamed live if you see anything that goes against community guidelines or that is violence that should not be on the platform at all take it down immediately from the platform and every other source that it's being spread on because i don't understand how these platforms, these uh, social media platforms or content creation platforms take down content that perhaps is not even violent or against the community guidelines, but they say they are quote unquote, and they take it down immediately. But when it comes to negative content, mature content, uh, violent content, it's there. It's there for forever. It, it, It goes nowhere. And, and that's my that's my problem here is that the content regulation, where is it? You guys take down videos on YouTube, uh, on Twitch that are, t- to your eyes, violating community guidelines. TikTok is another one. When the video has no, no, no violence, nothing vile in it, it contains no vile content in it, but yet you take it down. How does that even work? How does that policy work? But then you have situations like these where you take minutes to take on to take on the stream and you have other people who have the content and they're posting it all over the internet, but yeah, you don't do nothing about it. See, if I were Twitch and I see someone else is posting the same video that was streamed on my platform, I'm gonna tell them, take that down. Take that down. Because now Again, back to pointing fingers, right? Now everyone's talking to Twitch. Everyone's pointing fingers at you now as a company is saying, regulate your content better. Do something to get all the negative content out of your platform. It's another big issue. Is, you know, Twitch it holds a major responsibility in, in this event, in the shooting. 
and we need better content regulation. And and don't even get me started on um, a particular person that's on Twitch and that has influenced Twitch, that has made Twitch to make the decision to allow mature content on the platform, on the streaming site. Uh, listen, that's what I don't understand. You you allow this, but yet you don't have better content regulation when it comes to actual streams like these but you're allowing this for one person that's the problem where as a company where are your priorities at listen twitch is an amazing platform an amazing platform an amazing starting ground for people who want to pursue their dreams in streaming or want to have their own platform but when it comes to business policies and guidelines and content regulations these companies handle it so poor extremely poor and something has to be done to fix that when it comes to content regulation something has to be done with that being said ladies and gentlemen uh this is something that i wanted to discuss but like i said when it comes to topics like these it brings a lot of courage and a lot of um, guts to really come out here and publicly discuss this like i said like i said with every episode that i discuss because i do discuss disabilities and technology and I get that those areas can bring controversy as well um I'm ready I'm ready man like, listen you guys know that I'm a man of positivity that I'm not trying to discuss these things like I said I have despite of making money or pick a side or defend or sugarcoat a particular thing no I I tell it how it is I give my verdict on these things on these situations of course with um obviously paying respects to the people who are affected in these situations because this is something that we need to break out of as a human race it's just a violence and hatred so when i do talk about these things whether it be war shootings it's just know that i'm not picking a side that it's not about politics it's not about sugar coating it's not about talking soft or being soft no like I said, everyone has a different mindset. Everyone's going to take this as as they wish. So I'm aware of that and I'm open-minded to that. I know that this is a um, common thing when it comes to content creation. The, the, there will be hate. There will be comments bashing you. There will be people attempting to cancel you for what you're saying. Listen, I do my best to try to speak the truth and truth only. That's it. That being said, I love you guys. Hope you guys stay safe in this crazy world that we live in. I'll leave you guys with the disability facts. And we'll see you. I'll see you. Oh, yeah, this is good. Like I said, this, this episode is going to be going out early uh, this week coming up, perhaps. And I'll see you guys next week for episode 22. That being said, you guys stay safe. Stay blessed. Love you guys. Take care.